when I was a boy, 10 or 11, living in Brooklyn, a summer's day, as summer's days today, this time, were hot and muggy and very unpleasant. I myself am very sensitive to heat and much prefer the cold. I love the winter, but can't bear the summer. And I since learned that to Shakespeare, a summer's day conjured up daffodils and butterflies and songbirds. But I first became really acquainted with Shakespeare in PS 152, because they prided themselves that it was the only elementary school that had a class in poetry for fifth and sixth graders, that's we were 10 and 11, and it turned out that the poetry was Shakespeare. The boys would get up in front of the class and take a bow, and the girls would curtsy, and each would recite the same poem. You can imagine how boring that could be with 35, 38 children getting up in the same class and reciting the same poem for a whole hour. And so to do something to make it more exciting, the boys decided to see who could say it the fastest. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day that what more lovely and more temperate? Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May, and summer's lease is thought too short a day. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines, who often is gold complexion dim. And every fair from fair sometimes declines by chance, and nature's changing course and trim. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair thou wowest. Nor shall death brag thou wanderest in his shade, within eternal lines of time thou owest. As long as men can breathe, their eyes can see, so long will his vista, and this gives life to thee. And the highlight was, when my parents would go to school the parents' night, my mother and father would go and visit each teacher. My mother would go to Miss Curtis, who was the poetry teacher. She would say, and said more than once, that she thought I was one of the best Shakespearean scholars she ever had. I think that memory always favors the person with the memory. We look at ourselves through a, the prism of memory and make ourselves better than we were and more handsome than we were, more righteous than we were, and usually can rationalize things that maybe we're not so proud of. And memory probably wipes away a lot of the faults because memory now overwhelms them with the overlay of good deeds. We had a small home library, mostly on religious books. This was the 1930s and early 40s, the time of depression in the country, and Hitler and the war overseas and the Holocaust. My father used to immerse himself in religious books, books on Jewish philosophy or religious philosophy, I suppose, trying to find some rational answer for why the world was coming apart, and his world was coming apart even more so. In my home, we had these 10 volumes called the Henley edition, and 10 volumes, the works of William Shakespeare. 